Hey everybody, it's Matt Bowles. Welcome to my video training on minimalist packing. This is called How to Travel the World Full-Time with Carry-On Luggage Only Without Sacrificing Fashion and Style. So for those of you that do not know me, I'm just going to start off here by introducing myself and then we'll talk about what you're going to learn today and then we will dive right into it. So my location independent business is called Maverick Investor Group. It's a fully remote real estate brokerage and we help people to buy cash flowing rental properties in the best U.S. real estate markets from anywhere in the world because these properties are fully turnkey. So they're single family homes, but they've already been fully renovated. They already have tenants in place and they already have local property management managing the property. So you can buy them and own them from anywhere without having to be the landlord or the rehabber or live near the property. And so I have been running this business since 2007 and i run this business as i travel the world if you're interested in learning more about that you can download our free white paper on real estate investing for digital nomads at the maverickshow.com nomad the other thing that i do is i host the maverick show podcast which was ranked the number one digital nomad podcast in the world by web work travel I have published over 200 episodes. We have listeners in 144 countries. And every single week, I am interviewing digital nomads. I'm interviewing location-independent entrepreneurs and world travelers. And we're having incredibly interesting discussions about travel experiences, about how they built their location-independent businesses. Uh, and I'm pulling out actionable tips and tactics and strategies for the listeners every single week. You can find The Maverick Show with Matt Bowles on any podcasting platform, and you can subscribe to it there. So I have been traveling the world now. This is my 10th year of full-time itinerant travel with no base. I have lived in 65 different countries on six continents during that time. And through those 10 years, I have been focused on refining and improving the art of minimalist packing. And so what you are going to learn today is, first of all, why to downsize to carry on luggage only. Secondly, how to downsize to carry on luggage only. And finally, where to start finding the things that you need to begin this downsizing process, because I tell you, it is a process. And when we talk about minimalist packing and carry on luggage, my carry on luggage enables me to pack for beaches, ski trips, dressy nights out, all of it together just in my carry-on, okay? So I travel full-time. I have the same luggage all year round, and I can go out to any of these different climates. I can dress up. I can dress down. I can go to the beaches. I can go to the slopes, and I do it all out of the same carry-on suitcase. And so that is what we are going to talk about today uh, in terms of exactly how to do that. And we got to begin with why. We always have to begin with the why, because that is what is going to be the primary motivating driver. And it's important to have that uh, as the foundation, because I started my nomad journey in 2013 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I can tell you, I definitely did not have carry on luggage at that time. I was deciding what to pack for my nomad journey. And I lived in Los Angeles at the time. And one of my favorite things in my entire apartment in LA was this La Pavoni Stradivari manual lever espresso machine imported from Milan, Italy. This was a countertop appliance that I used probably four times a day, every single day. And as I was looking around, I was thinking about what am I going to bring on this nomad journey with me? And I was like, mm, yeah, I'm going to take this espresso machine with me. And so this espresso machine literally took up a entire carry-on suitcase. Okay, I wrapped it in some t-shirts and that was like one carry-on suitcase was just this espresso maker. And then I had a giant checked bag of luggage 
which I just packed an enormous amount of things into that. I was looking around my apartment. I was like, oh man, maybe I might need this. I might need that. I might need this. You know, I had a pair of hiking boots, for example, hadn't worn them in 10 years. I was like, I might go hiking. I might need those hiking boots. I'll take them. I'll pack them. Right. So I pack all of this stuff and I get to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and it is just crazy lugging all this luggage around. And finally I get to my place and I get my espresso machine on the counter. And I was like, all right, it took a lot to get this here, but I'm really excited to have this here now. And then I go to plug it in. And then I realize that this is an American countertop appliance. And in Argentina, the voltage is 220 Watts instead of 110 Watts. And if I try to plug this countertop appliance into a plug in Argentina, it will likely blow up the entire appliance uh, because the voltage is entirely different and it's absolutely not usable. And so then I had to figure out what to do. And so I called my Airbnb host and I said, you know, I need a, an electrical converter. Okay. This is not, an, this is not like a travel adapter for a different size plug. This is a, an actually a converter, that, a transformer that converts the electrical current, right? And so she says, well, there should be uh, one at the hardware store on the corner. Just go down there and see if they have one. I said, oh, okay, great. So I go to the hardware store and in my broken Spanish, I'm explaining I need an electrical converter, a transformer. And the guy says, yeah, okay, um, we have that. I, he says, how many watts is the device? And so I tell him, uh, it's a thousand watts. And he just looks at me and he's like, you're crazy, man. He's like, there's only one store in the entire city that has an electrical transformer for a thousand Watts. And he tells me where it is and it's maybe like a 25 minute walk or so. And so I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to do the walk. I'm in the new city. I want to walk around the city. It'll give me a chance to see the city. I said, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to put on my hiking boots because I haven't worn them in 10 years and I want to get some wear out of these boots and prove to myself that I didn't just pack them for no reason. I'm going to wear these hiking boots and I'm going to walk through the city. So I'm walking through the city in my boots and I walk and I go down to the shop where the, uh, they sell the transformer that I need. And I talk to the guy and I said, do you have this? And he tells me, he's like, yeah, we have it. And uh, so he comes back and he brings this enormous thing. I mean, this thing is huge. It probably weighs 20 pounds, something like that. I mean, it's incredibly big and heavy. And I was like, that's what I need. He's like, yeah, you want to convert a thousand Watts. You need this. You plug the machine into here and then you plug this into the wall. And I was like, how much does it cost? And I was super expensive and I negotiated them down the best I could. And finally, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to buy it. I have no choice. I brought this espresso machine all the way here. I can't use it without this. It's the only place that sells it. So I'll buy it. So I buy it. And so I'm walking home and I'm carrying this incredibly heavy thing. And then all of a sudden it starts to rain. And then it rains harder and then it just turns into a downpour. And I just, I'm like, well, I'm already soaked. I guess I'll just keep walking in the rain. And then my sole of my shoe on the right side starts to come undone from my shoe. Cause I hadn't worn these boots in like 10 years. <laughs> so they had deteriorated a bit. And all of a sudden I noticed the entire sole of my shoe is now flapping on the ground and not coming up with my shoe. And then all of a sudden the sole of my shoe just falls off my boot. And then now my socks are like pressing directly into the wet sidewalk. And then all of a sudden the, sh the sole of my other shoe falls off of my other foot and so now both of my socks are just pressing directly into the sidewalk because neither of my boots now has a sole on them and so my socks are literally just stepping in the puddles and walking in the puddles and finally i get back to my apartment i'm completely soaked all the way through dripping wet but i have my transformer i plug it into the wall i plug the espresso machine in and it works and then i realized that in order to continue to carry this with me around the world, I would now need to carry not only the espresso maker, which takes up its entire own suitcase, but also now this 20 plus pound electrical transformer in order to be able to actually use it anywhere. And so at the end of my point of Cyrus trip, I decided, you know what, there has to be a better way. And so I started to study minimalist packing and over the course of 10 years on a very gradual journey and process i figured out how to do what i'm about to show you how to do in one video okay so let's talk about 
why downsize to carry on luggage. You have to get the motivation right. And that has to drive you, right? So it took me a while to have such a challenging time traveling uh, that I was really motivated to do this. But these are some of the core reasons. Number one, you save money with check bag fees because you never check a bag. So you don't ever pay for that. Number two, you save time. The amount of time that it takes to wait for your luggage after every single flight. Sometimes you're waiting an hour for the luggage to come out on that carousel, right? There's people waiting at that carousel. I'm already at my Airbnb having a glass of wine on the patio and people are still waiting for the luggage to come out of that carousel, right? Also, the amount of take, time it takes you to pack significantly less because you have so much less stuff, right? I can pack my entire suitcase. If everything is out of my suitcase, I can pack the whole thing in less than 30 minutes, right? So like when it's your final night somewhere and your friends are all going out and celebrating a final evening, some people are like, oh no, I can't go. I got to go home and pack, right? Never happens if you're using carry-on luggage because you can pack so quickly. You also save the hassle of lost and damaged luggage, right? When you let your luggage out of your sight and out of your control, what happens is periodically, if you travel a lot, it will get lost and it will get damaged. And that will be a big headache that you then need to figure out how to deal with, okay? If your luggage is always with you and always in your possession because you're always carrying it on, then it's not going to get lost or damaged, right? You also avoid the pain of lugging giant suitcases or backpacks around. If you've ever tried to pull giant suitcases over cobblestone roads in Europe, it is not pleasant, right? Or through a down a dirt road or this or whatever. I mean, it's just, if you have a long walk to go somewhere, it's just can be really crazy. Okay. And so less luggage, smaller luggage, lighter luggage will make your life physically a lot easier as you are moving. You are much more agile and able to move from place to place much easier, okay? Also, it is incredibly, I have found, psychologically liberating. It is incredible when all of the physical possessions that you own fit into carry-on luggage. It is remarkable how positive of a psychological impact that can have. Because for me, what it's done is it has just really removed me from all of these socialized pressures to participate in materialist consumption and just buying more and more things and stacking up more and more things and going shopping all the time and buying the latest this and the latest that. And instead, it's basically created this physical restriction on how much stuff I can actually have in my suitcase. And so I actually can't even, it prevents me from going shopping because I can't buy more stuff because I can't fit more stuff in my suitcase. If I'm going to buy something, it's got to replace something that's already in my suitcase. And so it really helps to, I would say, guard me from and the materialist pressures that were socialized into so heavily. And so for me, that has allowed me to focus my life on experiences and to focus my life on relationships with people. And that has been incredibly fulfilling. And also, this is the real kicker, right? Which turned out to be an incredible benefit of downsizing your life in this way, which is that if you own a lot less stuff, you can buy much nicer stuff. <laughs> right? So the amount of things that I own compared to the amount of things that let's say a normal person owns, has a whole closet full of all different stuff. If I own a lot less, I can pay a lot more money for each one of those items and get a much nicer version of it without spending more money than a normal person would spend on that category of item. Right. And so that has been really cool because I've been able to buy some really high quality things that feel absolutely amazing to wear and look really great. And that has been a really, really cool and fun piece of this as well. So let's now talk about how to downsize to carry on luggage. All right. First thing, let's define what we mean by carry on luggage. I am talking about the amount of luggage that is legally allowed to be carried on to a regular domestic US flight or a regular international flight. 
every once in a while, you know, you get into some tiny plane where they don't have enough space in the overhead for people to bring bags on, or, you know, you have an airline with some crazy weight restriction because it's a discount airline and they, you know, have, so sometimes there's exceptions, but we're talking here about a regular airline, a uh, domestic U S flight or international flight on a regular airline, a uh, major airline that uh, what they allow you to bring on the plane, which is one uh, rollerboard suitcase that fits in the overhead compartment and one uh, laptop backpack that fits underneath your seat. Okay. So we're going to talk about how to fit everything into these two pieces of luggage. And I'll show you the ones that I use in terms of the actual branded model suitcase that I have is called Briggs and Riley. And I use the baseline essential carry on spinner. I have found Briggs and Riley. I've used them for over 15 years and I have found them to be absolutely and game-changing suitcase. This is, in my opinion, it is the preeminent suitcase brand on the market, period, bar none. These suitcases are made out of ballistic nylon, aircraft-grade aluminum handles, hybrid fiberglass frame, and it is the only suitcase that I'm aware of that comes with an actual for real lifetime warranty, meaning if any part of the suitcase breaks for any reason, at any point, they will fix it for free, okay? They, you you know, you can take it to a repair location or send it in and they will repair it for you and send it back to you. So this has been, and I have done that. Okay. So this has been an incredible, incredible brand. And I use their laptop backpack as well. This is the baseline traveler backpack. And what it does is just slides right over the handle of that rollerboard suitcase and then you can just take the suitcase handle and, and roll it and the backpack is attached to it all right so when we talk about packing we first need to start with what not to pack okay let's talk about what not to bring do not bring things that you are not 100 certain that you will use regularly do not bring bulky stuff instead use highly compressible alternatives you do not need to bring most toiletries, okay? Unless it's a really specific, highly specialized item. Most toiletries, you're going to be able to buy them wherever you go. So you don't need to pack them. Specialty gear for things like skiing and scuba diving and formal events. You can usually rent that wherever you're going to be doing the skiing or the scuba diving or going to a formal event or whatever. You can rent it there. So you don't need to pack it and gear for culturally or location specific events okay instead you can buy it there and then when you're done using it you can donate it there all right i have done this a number of times i'm going to give you some examples of that um this picture on the left is in bolivia there i just simply bought this traditional bolivian hat which was really really cool and i just wore that every single day throughout my entire trip in bolivia and then at the end of that trip when i was leaving bolivia i just donated the hat to someone right and then on the right hand side here that's a shervani that i bought in india and i used that to attend a number of cultural events and then when i was done um you know with that trip i donated that as well and then here is another example this was uh an incredible party this is the legendary dine en blanc pop-up elegant white party this was the 30th anniversary in paris there's like 14,000 people there. It was incredible. But they have an incredibly strict dress code for this thing, okay? You are required to wear all white. And there's no eggshell. There's no ivory. There's no off-white. It all has to be white. Everything, including the shoes, including the socks, like nothing can be other than white, all right? And in my luggage, I owned literally nothing that was white. <laughs> and so I had to buy an entire outfit just for this one event, but it was so epic that it was a hundred percent worth it. Bought this outfit, attended the event, and have been talking about it ever since. And then afterwards, I donated the outfit and kept rolling. All right, so now let's talk about what to pack. And I'm going to show you how I pack for a year plus of beaches, snow, adventure sports, and dressy events in one carry-on suitcase, all right? So hack number one, and this is gonna be the most important foundational packing hack, is focus on versatility, all right? 
use versatile colors. Black is very versatile, so I make that a staple of my wardrobe. You should coordinate your clothing pieces to be very interchangeable with each other to create the maximum number of different outfits. And for women especially, because you can do this more than men, focus on accessories, small items like scarves, belts, jewelry, etc., which can make outfits look entirely different even though they have the same base clothing pieces, okay? So versatility is the key here. I'm going to give you an example. These are my sneakers, all right? You'll notice they are all black. Now, it's oftentimes difficult to find an all black running shoe. And so what I do is I custom make these. Uh, Nike has a website where you can uh, do custom sneakers. And I just make every single part of the sneaker black. And that's how I customize them. And I order them and they look like this. Now, these shoes, I obviously wear them for running. I also wear them for any other type of fitness or exercise. I also wear them for hiking, right? And black is a great color for that because if they get a little bit dirty or whatever, it doesn't really show up. But also you will notice that if I were to put on a nice pair of pants and a collared shirt with these, if you're not looking really closely, you can't really tell that they're not dress shoes, right? So these are incredibly versatile to have this one pair of shoes, the number of things that I can use them for is really expansive, okay? So this is very versatile piece in my wardrobe, okay? Let me give you another example. The Aviator nonstop travel shorts, okay? These shorts look like really nice dress shorts, okay? So when I'm in a warm weather climate, I can wear these as dress shorts and then wear a short sleeve collared shirt with these and go out to a nice restaurant. But these are also my swim trunks, Okay. And I go swimming in these. So they're dress shorts, they're casual shorts, and they're swim trunks all in one pair, right? They're durable, breathable, comfortable, quick drying, stain resistant, water resistant, all of that stuff. And they have two secure hidden zipper pockets. Aviator does this. It's fantastic. You can put your wallet or their valuables in there and zip the pocket so that you are keeping it safe from any kind of pickpocketing scenario or even just falling out of your pocket, right? Aviator also makes these black travel pants, which I have as well. These have three hidden zipper pockets for your valuables, including front uh, pocket zippers and back pocket zippers. I love this. It is incredible security against any kind of pickpockets. And these pants are also durable, stretchy fabrics, super stylish and comfortable. Um, and they work great with dress pants. You wear them with a collared shirt. You can even put a blazer on. Uh, and these pants look and feel fantastic, but they're super comfortable as well for like wearing on the plane or a long flight or something like that. So again, a super, super versatile piece of my wardrobe. And then I also have a pair of khaki pants. Uh, these are made by Western Rise. These are the Evolution pants, ultra lightweight, incredibly compressible. They have also a four-way stretch fabric, highly breathable, water and stain resistant as well, and very versatile, right? You can use a pair of pants like this for hiking, you can also use it for a business meeting, going out to dinner, any of that kind of stuff, right? So you want to have really, really versatile selection. Uh, in, and so I also have a third pair of pants, which is uh, my denim jeans, okay? So between those three pairs of pants, they basically all go with all of my shirts, right? So I have an incredible array of outfits because everything goes with everything else. They're all very versatile in terms of what I can use them for, right? All right, now hack number two, buy clothes that are made out of travel conducive materials. 90% of my gear is made out of merino wool, which comes from merino sheep. And if you're not familiar with the properties of merino wool, this is a game changer for your travel wardrobe. Merino wool is very, very unique. It comes from merino sheep, which live in extreme conditions in New Zealand. So it gets unbearably hot in a certain part of the year and incredibly cold in another part of the year. And so most regular 
sheep would die in those conditions because it's they're too extreme. And so what merino sheep have is this really unique type of wool that is temperature regulating. So when it's hot outside, merino wool makes you cooler. And when it's cool outside, merino wool keeps you warmer. Okay, so it literally has this temperature regulating component, which is incredible. It's also non-itch. People think of wool. They think, oh, is that itchy? Not merino wool. It's non-itch. It's hypoallergenic. It's super soft and comfortable. And it's quick drying, sweat wicking, and breathable. It also has natural 40% UPF sun protection. So it blocks 97% of the sun's rays compared with a regular cotton shirt that would block, say, 20% of the sun's rays. Okay. And it's 100% biodegradable. So when you wear this thing entirely out after wearing it for years and years and years, and you're totally done with the shirt, it's 100% biodegradable. So it's much better for the environment. And the real, real, real kicker here is that merino wool is naturally antimicrobial and does not retain odor. These merino wool companies have done challenges where people are wearing these shirts for like 40 days in a row, the same shirt, and it just doesn't retain any odor. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And so my t-shirts are merino wool. My running shirt is merino wool. My sweatshirts are merino wool. My dress shirts are merino wool. My underwear are all merino wool. Okay. Icebreaker Merino is one of my favorite brands. They make men's and women's underwear, hundred percent merino wool, all of its antimicrobial, quick drying, highly breathable, super comfortable. Okay. And there's a lot of brands that make merino wool clothing and they make different types of clothing, different styles of clothing, all that kind of stuff. But this is a game changer for travel. And I want to get into some of the fashion and style elements now, which also involve merino wool. So let's start off with my long sleeve dress shirts. This is by a company called Libertad Apparel. This is the style and performance travel shirt. This is 100% merino wool. Okay. Okay. Comes in four different colors. I gave a opening keynote address at the Nomad Summit in Chiang Mai wearing my Libertad shirt. This is the black version of that same shirt. And I I kind of mentioned at the very end of my talk that uh, that my dress shirt was made out of 100% merino wool. And I was sharing this with the people there. And after my talk, I was had all these people around me and they were all saying, can I touch your shirt? Can I see what that feels like? You know, merino wool, that looks, you know. And so that was sort of the big thing of this of this conference is that people had never seen a long sleeve dress shirt like this that was made out of 100% merino wool and had the properties that I'm describing to you, right? So this is uh, absolute game changer. My short sleeve collar shirts as well. This is These are Arc'teryx, merino wool. This one's a merino wool blend. And what I would recommend is that with these different companies that make these different shirts, there are different styles. And also the shirts fit differently based on body type and based on your style preference and all that kind of stuff. So I would recommend just trying some different ones and seeing which ones are going to be the best for you. But for me, these brands that I'm showing you are the ones that fit me the best um, and that look the best on me. Uh, and so I went and just bought a um, you know, bought the ones that I like the best. So I wear, uh, I, I travel with two of these short sleeved, uh, collared polo shirts that are Merino and two of the long sleeve, um, Libertad, uh, dress shirts, which are also hundred percent Merino. There are tons of different styles of hundred percent Merino gear for women, including dresses and all this different stuff, as well as obviously the athletic gear and the, the different things that, that, that I wear as well. Now, I do want to talk now about the high-end dressy fashion that I and what I pack for that, okay? Carry on luggage only. A lot of people think that, you know, it's going to be relegated to, you know, some basic beach gear and, you know, uh basic athletic gear and, you know, basic, you know, a few few casual pieces and things like that. What I carry with me is a three-piece Hugo Boss suit. I carry Ferragamo dress shoes. I have a Hugo Boss belt. I have merino wool dress socks by Smart Wool. 
I also have a white Hugo Boss dress shirt with French cuffs and cuff links. I carry three ties. And this all goes in my carry-in. Now, here's the pro tip for you. Wear the blazer on the plane. Number one, because that helps it from prevent it from getting wrinkled and stuff like that in your suitcase when you wear it on your travel days. The other reason, though, is because you will find that when you are wearing a blazer through an airport, you will oftentimes get better treatment if you need things or if something happens with your flight and you need to interact with people to sort things out or you need a favor from somebody or somebody to let you do something nice or whatever. When you are wearing a sport coat, I have found that you have a higher percentage chance of getting things that you are asking for if you are smiling and being nice to people. And if you are wearing a sport coat together, that for me has been the most effective formula in maximizing the chances of getting uh, whatever it is that I may need. So uh, that is the gear that I wear. And I, you know, some people don't ever wear this kind of gear and that's totally cool. If it's not your style, you don't even need to bring any of this. For me, I really like to have access to be able to dress up when I am in a place where I want to do that, right? Like when I'm going out in Tokyo, I want to go be able to go dress up. I want to go out if I'm in, you know, certain major cities that have certain types of events, or I'm going on a, you know, a date and I want to go to a really dressy place and do something really special and fun and cool. I just like to be able to dress like this. And so this is the gear that I bring, but obviously all of this is um, you know, you, you'll obviously tailor all of this to your own style. I'm just sort of giving you the principles here in terms of how to think about this and, you know, how to think about the categories and, you know, the hacks and the techniques. And then you can obviously customize all of this to your style, but I'm also showing you what's possible and what I bring in my suitcase. Okay. So hack number four is how to pack for cold weather. And there are two really key concepts for this layers and compressibility. These are the keys to packing for cold weather with carry-on luggage, okay? So let me show you what I bring and let me show you how I layer it, all right? So when I'm in a very cold weather climate, first layer is the merino wool underwear that I showed you and the merino wool t-shirt, okay? That's layer number one. Then I have merino wool leggings. You see the picture on the far right here. And I have merino wool thermal ski socks. All right. So I put those on. Then I have merino wool long sleeve base layers. All right. And you can see in the um, uh, a long sleeve base layer, I also carry two long sleeve merino wool shirts. Right. I call them, I'm calling the base layers, but they're, you know, long sleeve uh, shirts. Right. So I carry two of those. Um, and so I can wear them one on top of the other if it's like super cold, right? Then I put on a merino wool sweatshirt and I carry two merino wool sweatshirts also. And if it's super cold, I could put those on top of each other also. So then I would have the t-shirt, the long sleeve base layer, number one, long sleeve base layer, number two, sweatshirt, number one, sweatshirt, number two. I'm already up to five layers, okay? <laughs> if I need that many. Then I carry a down jacket. Okay, in the bottom left corner here, you can see the down jacket that I use is by a company called Mountain Hardware. And that down jacket compresses into what you see next to it there to the right. Okay, it compresses into something that is basically, uh, you know, not much bigger than your hand. And you can even carabine that on the outside of your uh, backpack if you want, use it as a pillow on the plane, any of that kind of stuff. Compresses up incredibly small. Right. And then as a final layer, I have a Gore-Tex outer shell, which is 100 percent waterproof uh, jacket, windproof as well. You can see there the blue one that I use. It's a, a Marmot is the brand that I use for that. And that is uh, an outer shell that you would put over the down jacket. And you, I use that when I go skiing. Uh, I also use it whenever it rains because it's a great raincoat. And I use it if there's like a lot of wind and it's freezing cold. Uh, and I just have that on the outer layer as well. So if you do all that, you're talking about literally seven layers of warmth and it's Merino. So remember if it's cold outside, it keeps you increasingly warm. So you actually have seven layers of wool, which keeps you incredibly warm. And then I have Merino, a winter hat and a Merino winter gloves as well. Okay. So that is how 
I pack for cold weather and all this stuff fits in my suitcase at the same time. Everything we're talking about here is currently in my suitcase. All right. So let's talk now about how to be compact and environmentally efficient when you're traveling. All right. So first thing that I want to share with you here is the platypus compressible water bottle. The water bottle on the left, I use this pretty much every day, <laughs> um, all, all the time. This is a one liter water bottle that when it's, when there's nothing in it, it compresses completely flat, right? So it takes up virtually no space in your luggage. And then you put the water in it and it fills up with water. And then you can just carry it around with you in your backpack or whatever. It's incredibly durable. Um, and it, I bring it on hikes. I bring it just in my day pack when I'm going to the co-working space. So I have water with me or whatever it is, but I use that pretty much every day. And then if you are the type of person that likes to drink a shake every day, you know, you're making a shake for something um, and you like to have a water bottle that has the numbers on it, like eight ounces, 12 ounces, that kind of stuff. This blue water bottle also by platypus compresses the entire bottom of that water bottle just folds up and rolls up into the top of it. So the picture there on the, on the left you see, is the bottom just rolled up into the top so it does not take up very much space in your luggage. So I travel with these two water bottles, the blue one for my shakes in the morning and the water bottle on the left for um, the water that I drink during the day. These are rechargeable batteries, okay? If you use batteries for anything, right? I, for example, use, I uh, have a podcast and I use a Zoom H6 recorder, which requires four AA batteries. I have not bought a new pair of batteries in years because I just have these four rechargeable batteries and I just plug it into the wall and then it recharges the batteries and then I use them and then I charge them and I use them. Uh, and so you are not buying batteries. You are saving money. You are saving the environment. And this is a really, really, really good thing to bring with you when you are traveling. The B Green reusable shopping bags. This also is incredible when you are traveling, especially if you are slow matting around the world and you are grocery shopping to be able to bring your own bags. Number one, you're not, you know, wasting a whole bunch of plastic bags and all that kind of stuff. But also these are incredibly durable. These things carry 50 pounds, like which is basically three plastic bags worth of groceries. You can fit into one of these things super durable bags and they fold up absolutely super tiny, much smaller than your iPhone. So you can carry them with you anywhere. They don't take up much space in your luggage at all. Same thing with my laundry bag. These fold up incredibly small, like keychain size. Don't take up much space in your luggage at all. And then you have your laundry bag. And then the other thing that I bring is a 10 liter dry bag, which when empty, again, compresses completely flat and takes up virtually no space in your luggage. But this comes in really, really handy because if you are, for example, in a place where it's the rainy season and there's crazy torrential downpours coming down every day and you're trying to walk to like the co-working space or even if you're taking, you know, uh, transportation, you got to get to the transportation and all that. And so you're, you're in heavy rain situations. These dry bags are fantastic. The 10 liter uh, fits a laptop inside it, which is why I like this size. And you can just take all your stuff to the co-working space. I can take my laptop, podcasting gear, whatever, just stick it in here and 100% waterproof. And then, of course, if you're going out on boat trips or water adventures or, you know, any of that kind of stuff, you know, you're kayaking or whitewater rafting, whatever, you just bring this dry bag and you can put all your valuables in there, your phone and your wallet and your whatever else. And then even if it goes into the lake or into the river, just if, you know, it floats on top and it's, it's super, super helpful. And it's a great thing to bring with you because it takes up virtually no space in your luggage when it's empty. And then hack number six is quality electronics. Let's start with the phone. The phone is the center of your universe. It is your control center as a traveler. This is where you have your translation apps to communicate with people in other countries. This is where you have your maps to navigate your way around the city and to find your way home. This is where you have your 
ride sharing apps where you're calling, uh, you know, your Ubers and, and that kind of stuff to come and pick you up. I mean, your phone is really, 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 really important to you as a traveler. And so you want to prioritize phone protection. So the first tip is make sure you get a waterproof phone. Before waterproof phones were available, I would drop my phone in a reservoir of water probably every six months or so. <laughs> Uh, obviously by accident, but it would just keep happening. And so now that I have a waterproof phone, it has really made my life a lot easier. And then you want to protect it, right? You want to get a, a screen protector because I have dropped my phone and shattered it without a screen protector before. And you want to get a high impact protective case, right? So the combination of the high impact case plus the screen protector will plus the waterproofing will give your phone a lot of protection and then i also use this magsafe battery pack on my iphone which is really cool because it magnetically clips onto the back of your iphone even through your case it doesn't have to touch the phone so it just magnetically connects with your case and starts charging your phone and so when i know that i'm going to be out for a really long time i don't want my phone to run out of batteries because then obviously i can't use it and so i will bring this a battery pack and then just stick it on the back of my phone and get the additional battery life from that. Okay. Then the Zenjur Passport Universal Travel Adapter is a game changer. This is an auto resetting fuse. It has fast charging for six devices simultaneously. You have USB C inputs into this thing, you have USB A inputs into this thing, and you have of the AC outlet into this device. And so this is, in my opinion, from what I have seen, the ultimate travel adapter, okay? And the one that I use. Now, in terms of sound and video, I use the Bose 700 noise canceling headphones. If you do not have or have not used noise canceling headphones, they are a game changer. And if you have used noise canceling headphones, there are a variety of them in different brands now. And the reason I use this particular one is because from my research and my experience, these have the best built-in microphone for clear phone calls, right? So if I'm using these headphones and I'm walking through an airport, let's say, and I want to make a phone call using my headphones, the microphone of my headphones while I'm walking through an airport, these have the clearest phone calls for me to be able to hear the other person and them to be able to hear me. Okay, that I have found. And so the I mean, the quality of the music and the noise cancellation and all that is impeccable as well. Like that's really incredible. But also they have a really good microphone for making and receiving phone calls while you're wearing the headphones. And then I use this JBL flip waterproof Bluetooth travel speaker which has incredible sound and it's 100% waterproof. It literally floats in the pool. So you can be bumping music through this speaker and literally just toss the speaker in the pool and it will float and continue playing music. So super versatile, super incredible. Uh, you know, put it in the shower, put it in the pool, like take it anywhere and it just plays your music, sounds amazing and um, is 100% waterproof. So love that. Now, the... Loom Cube portable lighting for your video calls is really important. Assuming that you do any kind of video calls for work or you do any kind of, you know, video recording or any kind of podcasting or even just, you know, even just personal calls for that matter with friends that you want to see them on video. It's really, really important for them to be able to see you well and these portable lights do just that. So they come with a tripod and they come with adjustable brightness and adjustable color and all that kind of stuff. And then they collapse up, collapse down super small. Okay. So these tripods fold up and, and, you know, become super small and they take up very, very little space in your luggage. But then when you bust them out and you extend them and you pull them out, all of a sudden you have this like professional lighting studio, uh, which is great for your work calls. And then for me, uh, you know, even though I'm doing an audio podcast, I can still see my guests when I'm recording with them virtually. And so I like to have the lights there so that, you know, they can see me really well on the recording. 
and uh, all that. And then, of course, if I'm on somebody else's podcast and they're doing a video recording or any of that kind of stuff, like you can look really, really great with this professional studio lighting setup. So I highly recommend that because even if you're just doing your job and doing your work, whenever you have a video call for work, you kind of never know what the lighting is going to be like in the place where you're going to be. And so to have these available is, is super, super important. And then because I do a podcast, I travel with a professional podcasting studio, which really just means two high quality microphones, like the one I'm speaking through right now. And they both have XLR cables and they both plug into the Zoom H6 recorder, which is also a mixer. And that's it. I mean, that is all you need to do a professional level podcast. These microphones also plug in directly to the laptop. If you wanted to use that through a USB plug, they could do that as well. But I plug them into the Zoom H6 recorder and I record through that, especially when I'm doing an in-person interview. Um, and so this allows me to do professional podcasting from anywhere in the world. And then hack number seven, other game-changing travel accessories. Let me walk you through some of these that I have found. Thin optics reading glasses. These are reading glasses that fold up and go into a case that is ultra thin. You can see there on the left-hand side, this is the closed case with the glasses inside of it, and it is about as thick as two credit cards. Okay, They have other versions of them. Literally, as you can see on the right hand side there, the top right, that fold up into a keychain. Okay. And then they pop out there and then you take them out and you can use those as reading glasses if you want that style. But they have all different styles, super fashionable, stylish. Uh, I like them a lot. And they also have sunglasses, as you can see in the uh, the bottom right there, that also fold up into a really, really thin flat case. And so these are incredible for uh for travel because they're just so compressible they take up so little room now i also use the quip electric toothbrush i have for years been trying to find an electric toothbrush that is conducive for travel because most electric toothbrushes say oh yeah it comes with a travel case but it's like this giant bulky thing whereas the quip electric toothbrush is literally thinner and sleeker when it's in its case here, as you can see, than would even be a regular toothbrush in a regular case that's not electric, right? Whereas this is electric and it's just super light, super stylish. Um, it comes with replaceable brush heads and batteries, and it's even Bluetooth enabled if you want to connect it to your phone and you can track it in rewards and stuff like that. Now, the other thing that has been really significant for me is finding these Peak Design packing cubes. I have tried a lot of different packing cubes, and these are by far the most stylish as well as durable packing cubes that I have ever seen, right? And so on the one hand, you use these you know, in part to help you compress things, but even more so than that, for me, it helps you to just organize your stuff. And basically, if you're in a place where you don't have, let's say, drawers or whatever, you can just pull out these packing cubes and your stuff is all organized in them. And they basically function as as drawers for you, right, to, uh, to keep your stuff in and take them out of and all that kind of stuff. So super, super stylish. I've been very impressed with the Peak Design packing cubes. And then this has been really cool, finding the Ridge carbon fiber wallet with an Apple AirTag attached to it, okay? This wallet is carbon fiber, so it blocks RFID stuff, protects your credit cards that are in there. It's ultra slim and sleek and stylish. You can see there compared to a regular wallet, how thin it is, but it holds 12 cards. If you want to put 12 credit cards in there um, or other types of cards, you know, you could do that weighs only 1.6 ounces has a lifetime warranty and it has an app it, an apple air tag that you can attach to it um in case it's ever lost or stolen so you can track your wallet which is awesome 
The other thing that I use are these military grade airtight pill bottles. So they're made out of indestructible aluminum alloy, super lightweight, totally waterproof and airtight. They also protect your privacy, right? So if somebody at the, you know, airport TSA is going through your luggage or whatever, it doesn't say, you know, on the front of the bottle what all your prescriptions are and all that kind of stuff. Um, and just much more efficient and durable than those big plastic prescription pill bottles. So uh, these have been really, really cool. Uh, I also use these reusable Velcro cord ties, which help you to organize all of your cords and just have them all wrapped up and all organized. You can even color coordinate them if you want. And uh, super easy to use, reusable, durable, and you know, every single cord that I have is wrapped in one of these. And then, of course, as I mentioned, the air tags from Apple allow you to track your stuff, right? So I have air tags in my, I have one in my suitcase and one in my laptop backpack, right? So one of each of my bags, in case either one of them is ever out of my possession for some reason, I can always track it and know exactly where it is. So let's say, for example, I went on, you know, some there was some leg of my flight was like some tiny plane and they didn't, you know, they couldn't fit any uh, rollerboard bags on the plane. They say, Oh, you got to gate check it or whatever, which happens once in a while. Then I have an air tag in there and I can always tell at every moment exactly where my bag is. And so if for any reason it was to get lost or stolen or something was happened to it, I can always track it down because I have an air tag in it. Same with my laptop backpack. I also have one on my wallet, as I just mentioned, and then I have one, as a keychain. So if I check into an Airbnb and it has a, you know, a physical key uh, that I have to take with me, I can just stick that on this keychain. And then I will always know where it is in case I ever somehow lose my keys or anything like that. Right. So it's kind of works like the find my iPhone thing. If you have that, um, which you can enable in your Apple electronic devices, you can basically take that and apply it to other uh, things that you own so that you can always track them and find out where they are. So super, super important. And then, of course, I never leave home without an uh, without a wine aerator, <laughs> which uh, I use the Venturi Essential Wine Aerator, which if you are into wine, you will likely already know that this significantly enhances the experience of the wine, right? When you decant a wine and you allow it to get exposure to the air and all that before you drink it, it improves it significantly, right? And a wine aerator, what it does, this, when you pour the wine into your glass through this aerator, it literally achieves probably an hour's worth of decanting in the 10 seconds it takes to pour the wine. Right. So from the time you pour it to the time it lands in your glass, it's basically just like accelerated the decanting process an hour. Right. Instead of waiting for an hour, you just pour it into your glass through this and boom, it's basically the same thing. OK, so this weighs less than half a pound, works with both red and white wine. And you can see there it just sits in the stand. And I just have that on my counter whenever, you know, wherever I'm staying. And then when I get a bottle of wine, I always just pour it through there and uh, enhances the experience of the wine significantly. And then finally, to uh, go back to where we started, I still travel with an espresso machine, but this one is a heck of a lot smaller than the one that I started with. However, importantly, it does make real espresso, okay? There's a lot of language and discussion out there about things like stovetop espresso makers and things like that, which are not really espresso makers. They don't actually make espresso. You can't make espresso on a stovetop because the definition of espresso is that it requires 16 bars of pressure, which you cannot achieve on a stovetop. And so this particular travel espresso mach machine, it's called the Wakako Nanopresso, Nanopresso achieves 16 bars of pressure through a basically like a bicycle pump technology. Okay. So there is no electricity needed for this. As long as you can produce boiling water from somewhere, you can be sitting around a campfire and boil water. You can be on a plane and request a cup of hot water. You can be anywhere that you can get hot water. You can make an espresso. All right. 
And what you do is you put the espresso in the portafilter cup there, you tamp it down, you put it inside, and then you just pour in the boiling water into the, uh, the, the part that holds the water. And then you pump it until the until it hits 16 bars of pressure and it will automatically as soon as it does that then start pouring the espresso into your cup and you get a real espresso with real crema you can also there's an adapter so you can use this with pods if you want to do that and my pro tip for this is to buy the barista kit because number one it allows you to make a double espresso instead of a single which i like to do but also it gives you another portafilter cup with a secure top, okay? So if you see the picture on the bottom right here, you can pack one portafilter cup and put it in the machine, like uh, on the bottom left there, and you can put the top on and then you have one that's like locked and loaded and ready to make. And then you can create a second one where you can pack the espresso and just put the top on. And then you have a second one that's ready to go. And I was once on a flight. It was the longest time I've ever been on a single plane. I think I was on a single plane for 22 hours. So we had like a 15 hour flight and then we touched down at the layover, but they didn't allow us to get off the plane. So we had to stay on the plane for like an hour and a half. And then we had another five or six hour flight, you know, something like that. And so I was on this one plane for like some crazy amount of time. And what I did was I knew that I would want some espresso while I was on this plane because I knew it was going to be a crazy long flight. And so what I did is I packed these two espresso portafilter cups with this. And I was able at two different junctures during that flight to just request some boiling water from the uh, from the flight attendant and then put it in and then make myself an espresso at two different junctures on this really long flight, which was super awesome. And I totally had the other people on the plane, including the flight attendants captivated. And they're all asking me about what that was and how was I making it and all this kind of stuff. So it was really cool. But um, this espresso machine goes with me everywhere and, and you can't boil in water if you are an espresso drinker like I am. So this is one of my absolute all-time favorite travel accessories. So if you pack right, what can you really fit in carry-on luggage? I'm going to show you a full audit of every single thing that is in my luggage right now. You can see I have three pairs of shoes. So I bring running sneakers that I showed you. I bring the dress shoes that I sold, that I showed you. And then I bring one pair of waterproof sandals that I use for the beach and, you know, that kind of stuff. I bring three pairs of pants, the aviator black pants that I showed you, the Western Rise Evolution khakis that I showed you, and the denim jeans. I bring three pairs of shorts, aviator um, travel shorts, which are also the swim trunks. I bring one pair of khaki shorts, and I bring one pair of running shorts for exercising. Then I bring two short sleeve collared shirts, showed you those, the merino wool ones, polo shirts. Then I bring three long sleeve collared shirts. I showed you those, the two Libertad uh, dress shirts, and then the white dress shirt that I wear with my suit. Then I bring five t-shirts. So I bring four icebreaker merino t-shirts, and then I bring one merino running shirt. And then I bring a black belt. I bring a pair of cufflinks. I bring two long sleeve base layers, all merino wool. I bring two sweatshirts, all merino wool. One compressible down jacket. I showed you that. One waterproof rain slash ski jacket. I showed you that. I bring five pairs of socks. So three merino running socks, one pair of dress socks, and one pair of those merino thermal ski socks. Then I bring six pairs of boxer shorts. Those are all the icebreaker merino underwear that I showed you. I bring a winter hat, a pair of gloves, all icebreaker merino. I then carry my three-piece suit, three neckties. I carry the thin optics reading glasses and my sunglasses. I carry some basic toiletries. I then carry the Wakako travel espresso maker that I just showed you, the podcasting studio with the microphones, the Zoom H6 recorder, and the two Loom Cube lights with the tripods. I carry the Bose noise canceling headphones and the JBL flip Bluetooth speaker, the universal travel adapter, the Apple product suite. So I have my MacBook Air, my iPhone, my AirPods, the Venturi wine aerator, 
And then I carry the reusable grocery bags by B Green, the 10 liter dry bag, the laundry bag, two platypus water bottles, and my Ridge wallet. So all of that fits in my carry on luggage. So you can, as I have done, downsize your luggage, step up your lifestyle and focus on experiences, focus on relationships with people and enjoy your travel more by carrying less. You can absolutely do this. You can apply the principles and the concepts to your own style, your own fashion, your own needs. I know a lot of people that do this I know a lot of women that do this, that dress very stylishly, very well. They travel with carry-on luggage only. So anybody can do this. You can go to any climate, whatever your style, whatever your fashion sense, all that kind of stuff. This is definitely possible for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the links to every single thing that I use uh, here for you to check out. Okay, so these are going to be affiliate links. So if you found any value from this video, if you could use my affiliate links on purpose, I would super appreciate that because that allows uh, me to get a little bit of income if you purchase anything that I have shared with you uh, at no extra cost to you, right? Cost the same amount, but they uh, are going to kick back uh, a little bit of income to me. Uh, for that. And so if you got any value from this video, it would be amazing if you could use those affiliate links or share those affiliate links. If you're going to recommend it to somebody else, any of that stuff would be great. And um, I appreciate you attending this video training. Have a great day.